Hi, this is Joe Rebello for the Kaju Kenpo Pylum System and Rebello Kenpo Karate. And again, the, uh, we're going to talk today about the, uh, the Kaju Kenpo Pylum System, the legacy of Grandmaster Bill Gregory. Uh, Grandmaster Gregory from Pawtucket, Rhode Island was one of the three highest ranked people uh, under Grandmaster Daniel Pai in the Pylum Kung Fu System. And part of the Pylum legacy is the study of Bok Ling Pai or Bok Ling Pai which is the White Lotus Kempo system. Now according to Grandmaster Daniel Pai, he claims that he had studied this particular system in Okinawa, in Northern Okinawa at the White Lotus Temple. Uh, again, unfortunately though, this doesn't seem to be a lot of evidence to substantiate that story. Um, whether an evidence of the actual physical temple existing in Northern Okinawa or Daniel Pai training there. Uh, from what we can ascertain, from what we see of the physical techniques of buckling pie, uh, there seems to be a big influence in the later curriculum from either Ed Parker or Al Tracy. Uh, again, uh, Daniel Pye states that he and Ed Parker were cousins. Uh, after speaking with Mrs. Parker, um, she states that Daniel Pye was not related to Ed Parker in any way and uh, she saw very limited uh, interaction between the two men. And uh, from what I, we can ascertain that uh, the only time that Mr. Parker really dealt a lot with Daniel Pye was uh, through tournaments in the 1960s and 70s. But irregardless of that, uh, what we're going to be focusing on are the direct techniques of the bottling pie system. Now some people will have these perhaps listed as the pylum fist sets or the, the pylum self-defense techniques. Irregardless, this is the orientation of Bok Ling Pai, the White Lotus Kenpo system. So uh, without further ado, let's get into some of the various self-defense techniques in Bok Ling Pai. Now let's progress on through the Bok Ling Pai Kenpo, or White Lotus Family Kenpo techniques. Uh, assisting me today will be Mr. Raymond Ramus. And uh, the first technique we're going to be going over through the uh, Buckling Pi system is going to be the first technique, Thunder and Earth. Now we're going to show you a couple of variations, a couple of versions of the technique that I have seen demonstrated over the years. Now you may have the particular technique, one of the three ways uh, shown, or perhaps you may have your own particular version. I am hoping through this work that we're doing with YouTube that you, as a pylon practitioner, if you see a particular variation on this particular technique, that you yourself will record yourself and, and show and add to the volume of the pylon material taught. Uh, again, I, I think it's sad to say that many times, with the exception of certain individuals like Mr. Glenn Wilson, that many of the pylon practitioners are really holding this material close to heart and should really share it more with the world. But hopefully uh, this will inspire you to do so. Uh, let's go to work. Now, when we work on the pylon techniques, on the buckling pie techniques, come on up, Mr. Raymond. And uh, I'm gonna be working Raymond here. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Come on over here, Raymond. Uh, Again, when we work with these techniques, um, we should mention about uh, one addressing one particular aspect, shorthand versus longhand techniques. What does that mean? Well, in a shorthand technique, like for instance, you'll hear a listing of a hammer fist in the course of this technique. A shorthand technique, the major rotational point is the elbow. A longhand, a long arm technique, utilizes the major center point of rotation as the shoulder. So too, in relationship to southern style versus northern style kicks, a southern style kick will utilize predominantly the knee as the main uh, center point of rotation. Northern style kicks are more stiff leg using the hip as the center point of rotation for striking. So we just want to make a small mention of that before we continue on through our technique. Now, at this point, when you look at the simple technique known as Thunder and Earth, it's listed as two major attacks. One is a front two-hand lapel grab, grabbing like so. Now, unfortunately, it does not list whether the lapel grab is bent arm or straight arm. From what we can see from the techniques, in all probability, this is a stiff arm lapel grab, meaning the person is reaching out to grab me. They haven't bent their arm to pull me in close. They're extending their arm to reach and grab me at this point. Really, sir? This is also, I see, occasionally listed as a front two-hand choke. And again, this would be a stiff arm choke, but a person just starting to reach out to grab me. In either instance, this will work. 
But again, one is more prevalent than the other. You normally see the lapel grab. And that follows true with suit in relationship to Kempo techniques. That Kempo techniques as a rule tend to start with a dead attack, a grab. It's the least dangerous technique you, uh, attack you have to deal with because once a person grabs you, it's just designed for control and restraint. So in this case, uh, we're going to show you the first version I've learned. A person grabs me with a front two-hand lapel grab. And in this instance, I can't step back. So what I do, I place my two hands together in a, in a prayer position with a slapping action, just again like the, a thunder clap, hence the term thunder and earth. Thunder, which comes from the heavens, releases the grip, my hands come down to earth, grabbing him, executing a right stiff leg kick between his legs, following it up with a hammer fist directly to the bridge of his nose. Now, again, in this case, his reaction, he moved back. So I may have to shuffle. When do you shuffle in a Kempo technique? When you have to. Ideally, when I make that initial hammer fist action, BAM! I want to come right in with a sandwiching elbow. Switch positions, please. Now, in regards to that, um, let's move forward, come on. In regards to that, we also have to uh, associate with reactionary positioning. Um, when we do this, and again, reactionary positioning is a term used in Ed Parker's American Kempo. I will be utilizing certain terms from that to address certain things that occur in the course of a technique. But here in this technique, person goes to choke me or grab me. The key ingredient here is that my back is to a wall. I can't step back. So I'm advancing forward. Clap. Up, down. Kick, hammer fist, wham! Now notice in that instance, the minute I made the hammer fist, I immediately come in with the sandwiching elbow to his head. And up. Thank you, sir. Now, you'll notice that the arm itself is using what's called a short arm technique meaning the elbow is bent. This type of hammer fist is used predominantly in northern praying mantis kung fu. Again, striking into the hammer fist, rolling back knuckle, several other actions thereof that confirm its Chinese influence. If we utilize the long arm technique, in this case, the attack again occurs here. From here, striking, driving up, pulling down. You'll see some people use the southern style kick. A snapping kick, either with the ball of foot into the groin to drive him forward, or a lifting instep kick between the legs to pick him up. And again, driving the hammer fist here. But sometimes they utilize that, that stiff leg lifting action, bang, the body falls forward and over, the person's hands gravitate the way they feel pain, the groin. The hand comes over in a hammer fist action here, and then striking him with an elbow. The problem with that, obviously, is the reactionary positioning. The head comes down too far, and we're not able to strike effectively. Sometimes, again, with the grabbing action, up, lift, kick, wham, stiff arm, hitting directly upon the soft spot where the four sections of the skull fuse with a stiff arm action and then striking with the sandwiching elbow. Now those are two of the basic versions and now in a moment we're just going to go into the third version which you're going to see is distinctly different. And we're back. Let's go up another particular version of Thunder and Earth. Okay, sir. In this case, um, again, I had picked this up from, uh, and I'll give credit where credit is due, Mr. James Craven, who was uh, the owner of the uh, boxing, uh, Chinese Boxing Institute International out of Tennessee. And at one point, he was associated with the Pylum system and wrote a series of texts on the uh, Chinese Hawaiian Kempo system. But when you look at the material, it's, it's obviously buckling pie in the Pylum fist sets. Uh, again, the particular version he teaches, and again, I'm going to go over it based on his, uh, his writings and his breakdowns. Again, the same attack with a front two-hand lapel grab, stiff arm. He would take his left foot, step back, draw into a cat stance, executing double phoenix eyes with two of the opponent's eyes. Then from there, ex grabbing the person's eyes, executing a front snap kick to the groin, followed by a right hammer fist to the temple, collapsing into a sandwiching elbow. Now you can do the, the hammer fist, of course, without the sandwich, and then shuffle it in step with the sandwiching elbow to the temple. Thank you, sir. Now there's just three basic versions of the technique. You yourself may look and say, well, we have it this way. Okay, this is slightly different. The way we do it is this. I look forward to hearing your comments. If you have something genuinely and sincerely um, constructive regarding this, I look forward to your criticism. Uh, this is Joe Rebell for the Country Camp of Pylum, and again, uh, in memory of Grandmaster Bill Gregory and those individuals involved with the Country Camp of Pylum system, I hope that you appreciate what I am doing in Grandmaster Gregory's memory, and hopefully you will get something out of the material presented. That being said, until next time.
Keep training.